Hi friends, Pastor Randy here. Have you ever considered what motivated Jesus to stay on the cross? Uh, through all the, the ugliness of it, what kept him up there? Uh, maybe you think he's a, he was a victim, at that point he was out of his control, but that's not so. Uh, we know from the, the Gospel of Matthew, uh, chapter 26, uh, Jesus, uh, it's, it's the night that he's to be betrayed, and the soldiers come to arrest him. His closest friend, Peter, pulls out a sword to take matters into his own hand, hands, and Jesus says, put that thing away. Put that thing away. He says, Peter, don't you know, don't you know that if I wanted to, I could just call on my heavenly father and he would send a legion of angels, an army of angels, and they would rescue me from this. But this is something I must do. I must go to the cross. Uh, and so that's what he did. Out of obedience to the father, he went to the cross. But, but what kept him up there? I mean, if, if he had the option of, of uh, tapping out or, you know, uh, abandoning, the, abandoning the mission, um, what kept him up there? And we find the answer to that in, in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Here's what it says. It says, looking to Jesus, in other words, he is our example, he is the leader and we are the followers, looking to Jesus the founder and perfecter of, of our faith, <clears throat> who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Okay, so what does it say? It says, we look to Jesus, we follow his example, and what example did he set when he was on the cross? It says that, that uh, looking at the joy ahead... He endured the cross, he despised the shame, and he's now seated at the right hand of the Father in glory. What kept him up on the cross? It was future joy. He was looking ahead. He knew where the Father was taking him, and he trusted his heavenly Father, and he knew that, that on the other side of this agony, uh, there is joy. What joy? The joy that he now uh, experiences, uh, revels in for eternity. Philippians tells us that, that this day coming when every knee will bow and every tongue will confess Jesus Christ as Lord. And, and so he, he went through the cross, keeping his eye on the prize, looking forward to the joy. It doesn't say that he enjoyed the cross. I mean, it would be crazy if I told you that, that when I'm going through hard times that I enjoy it. Or if, if you, I, I'm, many of you right now, you're going through really difficult trials. And for me as a pastor to say, just enjoy it. Just, just sit back and enjoy it. That would be hollow. That would be fake. That's not what Christ calls us to. It says that Jesus, because he knew joy was on the other end, he endured the cross. In other words, he didn't quit. He endured the cross. In other words, he, he hung in there to the end. And then he uses this, this interesting phrase. This is he endured the cross, despising its shame. Well, the shame of the cross. Jesus looked shame in the eye and he despised it. Now, if we were writing, we might say he endured the shame, he got through the shame. But no, the, 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 the verb is he despised the shame. What does that mean? It means he looked in the eyes and he said, shame, you will not own me. In my nakedness on the cross, shame, you will not own me. In my agony of the torture of the cross, shame, you do not own me. Jesus says, shame, my, my friends have all abandoned me. My name and reputation have been sullied. But shame, you don't own me. For one day soon, in just a matter of hours, you will be defeated for eternity. Shame, one day soon, in fact, in just a few hours, you're finished. You're done for eternity. And I will revel in the joy of my name and fame, Christ says, uh, for eternity. For the joy set before him, Jesus endured the cross, despising its shame. And the passage says, because he is our founder, he is the perfecter of our faith, we do what he did. We, what he did. we follow his example. 
it's it's a it's a teaching throughout scriptures we see it in in, in the book of psalms it, many songs have been written about this one phrase and that is uh, weeping may last for the night but joy comes in the morning it, it's a part of being a christian we we are joy seekers we know that 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 the, our heavenly father god has promised us that that if we endure, if we endure to the end, he has set it up. This, this, this life of ours, he set it up. The joy is coming. Your, your problems, whatever your most difficult issue is right now, it will soon come to an end. But joy is on the other end. Joy is coming in the morning. And that's what we look forward to. We don't, we don't en enjoy the suffering we now, we now are going through. We endure it. Jesus says to you, don't quit. Some of you are going through some really tough stuff right now. Don't give up. S stay the course. There's joy on the other end. Hang in there. Trust our Heavenly Father's plan. Just yesterday at River Church, we read and studied this passage from James 1. And it says this. It says, Consider it a great joy, my brothers, when you experience various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. It goes on and it says that, that when endurance runs its course in our life, that we will be perfected and lacking in nothing. The passage says, endure it. Hang in there. Joy's on the other side. Consider the joy when you go through various trials. James is not saying, enjoy yourself, enjoy the pain. No, he's saying, enjoy the fact that, that there's a better day ahead. And there's a perfection, there's a glory, there's, there's a beautiful plan that God has for you on the other side of this mess. It may come tomorrow, it may come next week, it, it may come in a year or two, but, but hang in there, my, my friends. Uh, stick with it. Um, trust, trust your Heavenly Father's plan. Joy is coming soon.